morning, everybody. Welcome back to our class here on urban church planning. Um, thank you for joining and um, welcome everybody. Okay, let's um, take a moment to pray together and uh, we will get started. Somebody could pray for us, uh, pray for the class and we will start, please, anybody? I will pray. Father God, we just come before your throne once again, Father God. Father God, give you wisdom, knowledge, and everything, Father God, that we can move, Father God, to your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, uh, bless each and everyone, Father God, every student, Father God, that uh, we will receive to your, uh, your, your word, Father God, and apply to our life and uh, your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, uh, uh, Father God, fulfill, uh, fulfill, Father God, your your reason, Father God, to what you given us, Father God. Help us to understand all subject, Father God. Father God, bless to sir and every student, Father God, and those students willing to join, Father God, help them to join, Father God, the class. Thanking you, Father God, to listening our prayer, Father God. Thanking you. Upcoming time and just submitting to your hand, take care of everything, Father God. Thanking you. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Here. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, so yesterday, in our class on uh, uh, urban church planting, we spoke or we started speaking about the seven mountain assignment, and uh, just to quickly review, we discussed uh, what this is about, how it started back in 1975 when God uh, put this into the heart of uh, hearts of some Christian leaders and then they put it forward to the church as a challenge. And uh, for those of us who are working in the urban context in a, in a city, uh, that becomes very relevant because we are there and uh, we can then influence uh, people who are in places of uh, uh, authority, and who, who are influencers in these seven spheres. So uh, I'll just quickly review some of the things we mentioned yesterday, and then we'll go forward from there. And uh, also, if you have any questions, please feel free to bring them up. So we talked about these seven areas of uh, family, religion, education, media, arts and entertainment, and business, economy, and government. You know, seven areas where, you know, if we as God's people can be salt and light in these seven spheres, uh, make a difference there by, first of all, influencing the culture, uh, we can then it's, it's a preparation process. It's pre we can prepare people through that to receive the gospel. So what we said is that as we are planning a church or a ministry in the city, we should think along these lines. And, uh, you know, we should, you know, uh, work towards uh, equipping our people, preparing our people uh, for that, for, for influencing uh, all of these seven spheres, right? So we said that, you know, we need to help prepare people, believers, give them heart, you know, preparing their heart so they can be strong, uh, prepare them spiritually so they understand, you know, how to spiritually tap into what God has given to them. And of course, they need to uh, prepare themselves naturally for their work. Right, anyway, so we covered till that point. And so we're going to go to this last part here is uh, uh, what we're calling as positioning. That means uh, God's people, believers, should position themselves uh, in these seven spheres. Uh, traditionally, you know, uh, what we've always heard preached is come out, come out, come out, come out and be separate. Now that is scripture, you know, look uh, in, in 2 Corinthians 6, 
uh, God says, come out and be separate. But uh, the, the context is to come out. You know, this is, I'm looking at Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, come out and be separate. Uh, the context is not come out in the sense, you know, don't engage with the world, but it's come out, coming out from partnerships that are sinful, from doing things that are ungodly, unholy. Because he says, come out, be separate. You, know, you stand apart from the sin, from all the evil that's in the world. But the message Jesus has left us with is, stay till I come. The word occupy, and I can just put a simple word there. In Luke 19, 13, he says, stay till I come. He didn't say, come out till I come. So, you know, traditionally what believers do is they come out and they are waiting outside till Jesus comes. But he said, you stay in there till I come. Luke 19, verse 13. Um, and this has to do, this had to do with Luke's record of the parable of the talents. You know, we have the parable of talents recorded in Matthew 25. But Luke also recorded this in Luke 19. And there you know, he tells them, you know, he gives to each one a certain amount of money. And he says, occupy till I come. Or the word occupy means do business till I come. Or engage with the system till I come. So it's like be there and occupy and engage with this, 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 you know, the, 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 the system here till I come, right? So we need to encourage people to go in to these spheres of influence uh, and see what they can do. Right now, of course, we do need people who will be dedicated for the work of the church and the ministry. You know, like what we are doing right now. Uh, you know, in, in other words, you can't run a Bible college. You can't do so many things from a church side. So you do need people dedicated to this. But you also need believers who are in the seven spheres. And you know, we are also on one of those seven spheres. We are in the mountain of religion, where we are making a difference spiritually. Uh, to advance the kingdom of God. But we need believers in all the other six spheres as well. Right? Now, what we need to understand is that and uh, that God can position people in so many different ways. You know, and uh, people can influence these spheres, uh, these seven, seven spheres in many different ways. And I've just, you know, listed some some ways, you know, some people can be leaders, you know, like like a Joseph, like a Daniel. But not everybody's going to become a Joseph, or not everybody's going to become a Daniel. Some of them will become like that. Some of them can be influencers, you know, regardless of what their position is, whether it's an Esther or whether it's a Naaman's maid. You know, the uh, Naaman's maid, her name is not even mentioned. Uh, she was working as a household help so to speak, in the house of Naaman. But she was an influencer. She spoke to uh, Naaman's family and said, hey, if, if, if only Naaman, you know, only, if, only he would go to uh, the prophet who was in Israel. So she was an influencer. Though she, her position was very small or very simple, she still influenced somebody very big. You know, or of course, Esther was a queen, and from her place of uh, as queen, she could have influence. Uh, or we could be like Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah was serving um, the, the the king as a cupbearer, but uh, from that place, being a cupbearer, he was able to bring in a lot of resources for rebuilding the walls of the city of Jerusalem. You know, so he had God gave him so much favor with the king that the king granted, you know, all the material that was needed, uh, all the security that was needed, and whatever was needed for Nehemiah to go and build the walls. So he became like an accessor. So he, he, he accessed provision, he accessed uh, resources for, to accomplish something God wanted him to accomplish. So people can, you know, function in so many different ways. Uh, they could be, you know, cross-pollinators. People who are in different, you know, both on the mountain of religion and, you know, influencing government, like Moses or Paul. You know, Paul was a preacher, but he preached even to people in authority. 
So, uh, you know, so they, you know, we can have different kinds of people positioned in these mountains and uh, are in these spheres and influencing at different levels. You know, so not everybody needs to be right at the top. You need people at, in the mid level. You need people at the, the lowest level, you know, down with everybody else at the grassroots levels. You need people working there. You need, you know, people at all levels beginning to influence each of these seven spheres. So when we are planting a church in a city or when you're starting a ministry, think like this, okay? So this chapter is just to give us, you know, okay, here's a way to think about how you can influence the city or maybe even the community uh, in which you're doing your work, you're planting a church or uh, setting up a Christian ministry in the city. Here's a way you can think that these seven areas that are around me, you know, education, media, arts and entertainment, business, government, family, religion. How can I mobilize the people who are here? That is meaning in your church or in the ministry that you're doing to start tapping into this. Now, of course, uh, you may not, necessarily affect all seven. If you can do all seven, that's wonderful. At least start with a few, you know, and say, okay, how can I help them make a difference in their sphere of influence, whatever their level may be. You know, they may be at the grassroots level. They may be in a mid-level. They may be in senior positions. But if, if, you, if, if the church can equip the believer, then the believer can go be salt and light and affect culture, prepare the hearts of people. So when the time comes for them to hear the gospel, they will be ready, okay? So before I jump into the next chapter, I just wanna pause, see if there are any questions, any comments uh, at this point. Any questions, any comments? Kiran, you were saying something on the chat. I didn't know. It's like somebody's crying. Or yes, sir. So I just so today's days like Nehemiah, the and I say like that it can happen, sir. Today's day and generation. Yes. Yes. Um, that today God will give us uh, access to people with influence. And then uh, from there, you know, things can happen for the kingdom of God. You know, just, just like how it happened with Nehemiah, even today. Okay, it can happen. And... Uh, yeah, God gives us access and, you know. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, go forward. So we understood, you know, uh, this aspect of, uh, so about uh, urban church planting, right? We talked about strategies, you know, looking at different ways and how you can develop methods, ministries to reach people in the city. We talked about the seven mountains, which is, uh, you know, how you can mobilize people from within the church to impact the city, right? So we talked about both. So both these are important in an urban church planting context to start thinking like this. And this is uh, this is a process. That means we have to work on these things. They, they take time. Um, you keep doing things that can equip people. So for instance, you know, uh, we, in our teaching, in a Bible teaching, so we did a series on timeless principles for the workplace. And we did sermon series on, you know, tending the garden or you know, different things, topics that are relevant for people who are in the workplace, just to show them how the Bible applies to their, uh, you know, to their life in the marketplace. So we've done that, and then we've um, uh, we've had um, 
in earlier days, we used to have um, uh, monthly meetings for Christian professionals where we used to equip them. And then we moved it to, uh, right now we do, uh, you know, Christian professionals conference and uh, seminars periodically um, that's geared towards uh, young professionals, uh, you know, not only to want to equip them uh, uh, from biblical values, but also, you know, how do you apply principles in the workplace? So, you know, regularly we conduct these seminars. Uh, or, 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 and these are geared towards, you know, if you equip the believer, the other ones who are out there in these seven spheres, so they will be able to have impacts, uh, influence for the kingdom, right? So you intentionally plan, you intentionally do these things uh, to equip them and to serve them, okay? Um, so let's move on forward to the next uh, chapter in this whole section on, on practical details, practical things to do when uh, you are planting a local church or a ministry, right? So we've talked about how to reach out and so on, but now when you come, come back to just the, the, the work that you're doing, and uh, some of this, uh, you know, you would have learned also in the course on the local church, is that uh, the work that you have started, uh, the church plant, uh, will grow, uh, will go through stages of growth, right? And uh, it is important that uh, both you as a leader and also the congregation understand the, the growth stages and that you transition uh, from each stage, uh, you know, uh, at the right time and, 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 and properly, right? So, so I'll just kind of go through the, the stages of growth so that you know that, you know, that this is how the work is going to grow, the church plant or uh, the ministry that you have started, right? So the, there is the pioneering stage. Right? Let me just... Um, there is the pioneering stage. Um, this is the time of you know, what we've, we've already talked about is... Uh, You've gone to an area. You have your core team. Yeah, you know you're 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 establishing commitment that this is the work God has called you to do, and you're going to do it. And you're doing all the groundwork. There's a prayer intercession, and uh, you know in the foundation stage, um, take the time to lay a good foundation. Uh, you know when you think about how a foundation is laid. Uh, for any big any building that that you would see that is about to be constructed, you know they they're, they're going down. They are actually digging into the ground. It's they're going the exact opposite direction of the building that's going to come up, right? And the higher you want to build, the deeper you have to go for a stronger foundation. So uh, when you're digging into the ground for the foundation. There is nothing impressive about that. It's very dirty. It's a lot of mud. Everything is being pulled out. And, you know, uh, there's nothing to show because all you have is a big hole in the ground. Uh, but you're, you know, you are doing work for the foundation. And then, you know, you slowly get things in. You start putting the rocks and the things there and the stones in there. And, uh, uh, you know, so this foundation stage may not, pioneering stage or the foundation stage may not look very impressive, but it is very important because the higher you want to go, the deeper your foundation has to be, the deeper you have to go, the longer sometimes it's going to take to dig deep and uh, uh, lay a strong foundation, right? Take the time to do that uh, when you're starting out the ministry. Right, so this would mean that uh, you are taking the time to establish your core team, people in the Word of God, taking the time to work, even if the number is small, uh, you're taking the time and effort to work with them, to build them up, to strengthen them. Uh, you're investing in their lives. Why? Because one day they are going to be your leaders. They are going to help you, you know, raise the building up. But uh, to get to that stage, you first have to invest in them. You have to pour into their lives and uh, be patient 
let things you know take their time and you'll have a good strong foundation then uh, once you you know you go through that foundation of pioneering stage you transition into now is the organizational stage or the structural stage where now you're beginning to build above the ground and people can see you know uh, uh, okay, now I can see things are coming up. You know, you can see the first floor, the second floor. You know, people are being, beginning to see the building come above the ground. So there is organization, there is structure. The leaders are in different places. Um, there are systems and processes being put together. So the organization is growing, right? Uh, so you'll have more than yourself. You'll have, uh, you know, several other people also working, carrying responsibility, heading up a, uh, uh, some of the ministries that you have started. So that's another stage into which the church plant will come into, right? Or the ministry you're starting will come into, right? You've gone past the pioneering stage. You've gone past the organizational, uh, the foundation stage. You're now in the organizational stage. Uh, some things to keep in mind is to, when you're in the stage, to put things in place so that it can scale up. That means whether you have 50 people, 500 people or 5,000 people, these, these things should keep working, right? So think, always think along those lines, um, uh, whatever you start doing in the organizational stage. Uh, some new ministries uh, may be birthed. Uh, you know, God may give opportunities, doors may open, like I've shared, uh, that uh, things will, ministries will begin to be birthed then. So you're going past uh, just focusing on the core. Now the core team is now helping you start out and carry out new ministries, okay? And uh, another thing I would recommend is that uh, even though you're, you know, you, you may have gone to plant one church, one congregation, think about a reproducible model. That means uh, it does things in such a way that if the need arises or the opportunity arises, you can reproduce a church plant once again somewhere else, maybe in the same city, right? So that's how we did it. You know, like uh, uh, today uh, we have five locations in Bangalore, uh, but our goal was always to have this reproducible model that we could reproduce ourselves uh, in Bangalore and outside, outside Bangalore. So, you know, we could go and start churches anywhere. Uh, you know, uh, so we can reproduce what we are doing. People understand uh, how to, you know, make this happen again somewhere else. So always think in those terms, you know, that the way you set up the ministry, the way you set up the church, it can be reproduced easily. The people who are working in one place can go and do the same somewhere else. Uh, then you come into what you would, we would refer to as a team ministry stage where, now, uh, you know, you have a leadership team. You know, the core team that you invested in the earlier days or over time, people who have grown up in the church today, uh, they become part of your ministry team. Uh, so you have a pastoral team. So it's no longer just you, but you've got a team. Uh, you will be playing maybe the role of a senior pastor. You're overseeing your own pastoral team. So you've got more people helping you uh, in the work of the ministry. Uh, and so a lot more can happen because they will oversee different areas of ministry and uh, you are just uh, spending time nurturing more leaders. You know, you're thinking about, you know, uh, next generations. So not only do you have people already there, but you're thinking, okay, how can I develop the generation, you know, uh, two generations down, how can we spend time with them, nurture them? So you're, you're kind of moving into more of a uh, nurturing new leaders stage. And so the ministry has now matured uh, to this level. Now, uh, what will happen is as the church continues to grow, there are two other stages you can think of is uh, you move into an equipping stage where more and more people, in the congregation or people who are part of the ministry are now beginning to do ministry. So it's not just you or some of the leaders you raised, but it's people from the congregation who are now also engaging in ministry. 
right? So this is a wonderful thing because uh, people start doing work. It's not, you know, they will go on mission trips. They will go out and serve in different places. And they will begin to, you know, pray for the sick and they will begin to do other things, right? And this is a wonderful stage to be when it's not just the pastor or the pastoral team, but it's the whole church now that are doing the work of the ministry. So you reached an equipping stage or you're basically training people to do the work of the ministry. So even your congregation has gone from being uh, little children uh, who come to church to from you know to young people and now they are becoming what you can say fathers and mothers. You know, they are becoming people who are doing the ministry with you, with your team. And uh, they can pray for people. They can go out and minister and all of those things. You know, so you have a lot more people that you can give opportunity to uh, in, 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 uh, in, in what is happening. So that's the equipping stage. And then you can transition into uh, and the next stage is an apostolic stage. That means now the church is looking outward. Uh, they're looking at you know, the city as a whole. They're looking at the nation as a whole. They are excited about serving the nation. They're excited about serving, you know, the the wider body of Christ and uh, serving how, uh, looking at how they can uh, reach others, you know, beyond that, the community where you started. So you become an apostolic church. And uh, you're, you're, you're thinking about, you know, starting churches in new places, uh, but there are no churches. Uh, so the church uh, is uh, able to reproduce itself in other other areas, you know. And believers are having this mindset. They are willing to go. They are willing to start. They are willing to move out. And so you're really in an apostolic function stage. And that's a great uh, uh, place to be when the church is reproducing itself uh, in many other places. So what, what, what we've done is now just quickly gone through, you know, this is how your work should grow and it can grow, right? So even though we are pioneering a church in, in an urban center, we're going there to start to work. Uh, remember, this work has to grow. And these are the ways in which that local church can grow or the ministry that you're starting can grow. So always look forward for that. And, you know, from as the Lord leads you, as the Lord enables you, you move the congregation into these various stages over time, you know. So it may take 15 years, 20 years, but you keep, you know, you make the journey through all these stages. You grow the church. You're not just planting there, you know, to be there for two years and then disappear. No, you are thinking long term that whatever I establish here is going to grow and we're going to, you know, be an apostolic church. We're going to go into a church that you know, that reaches the stage and multiplies ourselves in the city, uh, maybe in even other parts of the country. Okay, and uh, uh, what I would always encourage is become you know self-sustaining, become financially stable, so that you think about developing your own leaders, developing believers, and being financially stable. Right. So think in those terms uh, as you are um, doing the work uh, of the ministry. Let me pause and see if there are any questions before we go to the next next chapter. Uh, you're all with me so far. Is it clear? Any questions? Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. Let's see your responses in the chat. Fine. So um, and that's how, you know, you should, even, you know, although you're pioneering a work, there's a journey to make. You got to keep thinking about it and keep moving at the right, at the right time, okay? You see the maturity level, you see the development that has taken place and then you transition and you begin to work differently. All right, so I'm going to move into, we'll just cover one more uh, section and then we will close. Um, I want to talk now about multiplication, right? So this is something to think about, you know. So once you reach uh, a certain stage, you know, uh, once you are able to uh, set up, you know, the organizational, you're, you're, you're putting in leaders in place, 
uh, you know, once you reach this stage, especially here, you have a team of leaders, you can begin to think about multiplication, right? And branching. That means uh, you can have multiple church plants in the same city, right? And, uh, you know, the city, most cities are very big. And uh, just traveling from one part of the city to another takes a lot of time, right? So with all the traffic and all the other things that are there. So it makes sense to have multiple branches in the city so that people can go to the location that is uh, closest to them. So think about starting new churches in the same city. Even though you may have gone to plant one church, if you can grow it, develop leaders, think about plant, planting uh, more churches in the same city, right? So multiplication, think about that. Uh, a very important thing is to equip the people, right? Because it's the people from within your church who are going to go and help you start other congregations. And that's how it's happened for us as well. You know, so you've got to equip people uh, as you pour into their lives. Then you envision them. That means you give them a vision that, hey, uh, this church needs, I mean, this city needs more churches. And there are so many people. We can, you know, we can serve people in another part of our city. So you envision them, you know, who's willing to just help start another location, another church. So envision them. And then you send out a team from your current church. You put a few people together. You're just replicating everything you've learned. You say, okay, you go, you know, start a church in that other part of the city. So you send out the church planting team. Now, when you want to plant more congregations, there are many different ways you can do it, many options. Uh, you can plant new churches that uh, function independently. That means you release them, let them go, and they will function on their own. Or you can function you know, uh, all as one. That means you have uh, one uh, it's one church, but has many congregations, many churches, but you're functioning collectively together. That's how APC is doing it, right? So we are one church, but we have many churches or congregations around the city. Or you could have uh, satellite campuses. That means uh, you, know, you could do live stream. Uh, you can have campus passes. A lot, a lot of different options that you can think about on how to start you know, new church plants. But I would encourage you to think about that, uh, equipping people, sending them out, starting your churches. Yes, it's a lot more work uh, because you're managing multiple you know, locations, multiple congregations, uh, but it's going to bless more people because people who are far away in another part of the city, they may not be able to travel uh, or, or they, you know, they may not be willing to travel, but they may be willing to go to some a location that's close to them. So if you start something there, uh, it will it'll be uh, a blessing. Now, in the early days, when uh, when we were, you know, when we started, uh, I, I was always involved in the new church plant. So, for instance, uh, when we had one location, and we started one in South. So I would do two services. You know, we started South purposely. We put it at eight o'clock in the morning. So I would do eight o'clock in the morning south, come back to central and then do central at 10.30. And then we started one in north, Yalanka, the north part of our city. And then when we initially started, we started at that one at, uh, I think it was four or 5 p.m. So I would do three services, like eight o'clock in south, 10.30 in central, and then uh, the five o'clock one in Yalanka. So that's how we started. But then once these other locations, you know, uh, had people, uh, then, you know, we moved uh, Yalanka to eight o'clock in the morning and, you know, handed off to uh, somebody there, or part of our team to take care of the church and lead the church there. So, so then we started out, you know, we started uh, West, uh, again, 
you know, in, sorry, not west. We started uh, east. So uh, I would go to east and come to central. South and north had their own associate pastors to lead. Uh, so I would just do two. I would do east and central. And then sometimes I would visit north and south. And later on, you know, east had its own associate pastor. We started west and so like that. So, uh, so as, as um, you know, as you have more people, you can deploy them into various parts of your city and start out new congregations so that people in those areas uh, will be helped. And uh, it has it has been a very good experience because, you know, uh, people who otherwise would not have come to Central, one location, have been helped by coming to the one that was closest to them and uh, that they, they were ministered to. So think about that, planting additional congregations in the same city. And in the same way, uh, you can think about churches in other cities and towns. The similar, you know, similar um, thing applies. You need to equip people. So uh, uh, most of our churches in other cities have been through our Bible college students. Uh, some have been people who have, um, you know, uh, who worked with us, but uh, others, almost all of them, have been student people who studied with us in Bangalore, uh, and then they worked, served here, and then we sent them out, and they started churches in other cities. So you equip them, you envision them, then you send them out as uh, church pl planting teams, and again, you have the same options uh, of them, uh, you know, how they should work, and you continue to provide spiritual oversight and nurture. So you could actually multiply what you're doing, not only within your own city, but you can also multiply it across to other cities and towns. And I want to encourage you, I just want to keep that uh, in front of you, uh, that uh, you can grow into that, uh, even though you're planting, uh, you're doing an urban church plant in one place, eventually these are things for you to consider, and it definitely is worth the effort uh, if god enables you to do that it's it's worth it to you know reach out to other parts of the country as well okay so i'm going to stop here we'll, we will go into urban church growth models next next week uh, we'll talk about that okay so any questions uh, or any thoughts any things that you want to ask about what we talked about today mainly the stages of growth that the church is going to go through. Think about it, about multiplication and branching that, you know, you could grow beyond just one urban church plant or one ministry. You can multiply yourself so that um, whatever you've learned in one place, you can, you know, reproduce it, pass it on uh, to other parts. Uh, any questions? Okay, I uh, I don't see any uh, questions coming up. Uh, is it all okay, Thomas, Dave, Conan, Prince? Is that okay? I mean, are these things you can use in your ministries? I hope so. Okay. All right. I am seeing your responses in the chat. Okay. Fine. All right. So let's wrap up uh, with prayer uh, on this. And uh, I don't want to encourage you that in the days to come, you know, your churches, your ministries will uh, multiply beyond uh, just, uh, you know, where you start initially, that's good. But uh, you should multiply, uh, reproduce yourself uh, in other places. Okay. And may the Lord. Uh, enable you to do that. Okay, let's pray, and then we will dismiss. Um, somebody could close in prayer for today, please. Thomas? 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We praise you. Thank you, Dad, for the teachings, Father. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Jesus. Especially the seven mountains, very important, Father. We should not, uh, we should not be neglect about this, Father. For each and every area, help us to encourage the church members to be there, a influence the people in wherever they are, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. At the same time, Father, in the various stages of church grow, help us to be grow in jesus name father thank you mm -hmm. father here each and everybody let them grow and multiply and mm -hmm. let we impact the kingdom of god father mm -hmm. we thank you father let we have the part in the revival of india and will mm -hmm. do the greater things for the glory of god we thank you we praise you father in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you everyone uh have a good uh, rest of the day i'll see you tomorrow morning Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye.